Good day to everyone. So it's a beautiful day outside. Nice sunny weather, light breeze. Perfect for building grot mega tanks. Perfect weather. So greetings everybody. This is every man here on every man's 40k channel. So in front of you, we got the grot mega tank project going, the grot tanic. So we've made some changes. So this will be uh, part three. We're going to open this baby up. We're going to make some changes or show you the changes that we have made. So I went in and after a couple days of building this thing, I went in and I was kind of having some concerns or I had a problem with it. To me, it looked way too wide and way too big. So once we got this ram on here, uh, I extended this probably another inch over the overall length because if you remember we had a half an inch extending back here towards the back well once I went ahead and put that ram on there well we just extended it another inch so you know maybe so I went and did some research again went back online I know I showed you guys in part one I've had this kind of fancy little thing here that I made up well scratch that it didn't work uh, I have three and a half plus or minus five, which is, it's just too much. Uh, if you go ahead and look at it and I'll show you, let me put a reference sheet, uh, right here. As you can see on that reference sheet, it's the same size as a battle wagon. So three inches wide by five inches tall after you get all the turrets added to it. In addition to that, I believe it's only six inches uh, long or six and a half. Well, if we go ahead and drop a measurement here, which I'll show you, if you can see, let me turn it to the camera a little better. If you can see from all the way in the back to all the way up front, we're already somewhere between the seven and the seven and a half range. So I'm an inch over the size, almost an inch and a half over the size of what it really should be. So this is kind of like an orc battle wagon once you get the def roller on it or that big ram out front. We didn't want it to be that big. This is what we've got. So we're not going to go back from here. So we're going to leave it. But I did take some off the edge. So you can see these bits right here. So these pieces are what came off the decking after I slimmed it down. I gave it a haircut. So the profile, if you look at it now straight on, it's much sleeker, much slimmer underneath here. Much thinner in the way of the hull up and down, up and down this part. So now what we've got is if we go ahead and get you a cross section here, measurement from here to here, from decking to decking, we're right at three inches now. So that's perfect. I'm going to leave it. Sure. We overhang a little here and we overhang a little bit over here, but no problem. I can deal with that. So we have the correct size now, or at least a more correct version of the size we wanted. I took off a, a piece from here to here, and I took off one plank from here to here, which reduced it about a quarter inch on each side, so a half inch total. So let's wrap this up here for this part. So just wanted to show you all the turrets are magnetized. We've got all the turrets in. All the guns are in place. Yesterday we went ahead and we added the skids. Check those out. So we have three in place. Ready to start on the propulsion system. Like I've showed you, I'm going to take this bubble chucker. This is out of the uh, mech gun kit. 
and we're going to drop that baby right in the middle of the right in the middle just like that and it's going to be amazing when we get this all done how this thing is going to how this thing is going to operate it's going to be so cool so another thing we have is we have on top here we're going to start putting the crow's nest and the commander's hatch let's remove this here so if you can see i've already penciled in so we're going to lay in a door we're going to lay in some wire mesh or a screen so that when they're inside here you can it looks like they're looking out like a window we're going to put a roof we're going to cover this so we're going to have the roof come up and then come over the top of this turret here and inside here we're going to do like a an open crow's nest kind of command bridge where we're going to have a grot or a couple grots up there uh, hanging out pointing a finger or whatever so we're going to wrap this up right now we'll come back we're going to push this thing forward like i said i just wanted to open up uh, open this up this is uh, part three of the grot mega tank grot tannic build so we're back with another installment here so i just wanted to get you all caught up to speed on where we're at so obviously you can see i've got the crow's nest in right here i've got the flagpole in and i had this actually become removable so once we get the actual flag or the iconography on there I can remove it for packing and storage, you know, transportation. All the turrets, as we showed you last time, all the turrets are in, everything's done. We've got this mounted, the propulsion system. So we have a working hatch, so the grots can actually climb up. I can either have a grot standing in there, be in the commander, for example. Or I can just shut the hatch and call it a day. I went ahead and did some artistic work here by putting in the tin roofing. As you can see, I draw or drew in some stuff. We talked about that last, but we do have this top on the little rain cover, like on a battleship. If you've ever seen a, a battleship or a, a crew deck on a ship, they always have that kind of little rain thing over their windows. So the major construction is complete. So we're we're done. I mean, this is this is it. This is what it's going to look like. This is the total entity. We still have to put the exhaust in. So let me go ahead and grab you the exhaust pipe, which is right here. So this is a big straw. So we're going to put this in the back here and we're going to put two of these. So we're going to have two big exhaust stacks. I have, I have enough length on this straw that we're going to put two big exhaust stacks. I went ahead and added this little bit in the back just for some artistic flair, just to break up the, the line of the, the aft section. I didn't want this 100% flat. That would kind of look funky being totally flat back there. So we put this in here to kind of break that up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a grill. So like an exhaust grill here. And then we're actually gonna have some exhaust pipes and some tubings coming out of this area right here, this flat. So we're gonna draw or drill two holes and we're gonna actually have some more exhaust pipes coming out, maybe three, just depends. Then finally, in each section here, right here and over here, we're gonna put two propellers. So one propeller coming out and another propeller coming out. But those are gonna obviously not be little water propellers. They're gonna be like air propellers. They're gonna be more like fans. So again, we gotta build some fans and that will complete uh, most of the construction. But that to me is artistic stuff. It's really not the construction phase. It's kind of more like, oh, where's my head at in this project and what I want it to look like. So that's why I'm saying, the, the major construction is complete. I can take this right now today 
and put this on a table and run around and say, okay, I got a proxy. You know, it's my Grot Mega Tank. That's my proxy. I'm using this until I get it painted and finished. But in this condition, it's, I mean, it's ready to be put on a table. It's got the proper guns. It's got proper heights, proper dimensions. It's ready to go. So I want to take this opportunity today uh, to move away from the actual model and what we're doing on the build side of things. And I want to talk to you about uh, the configuration or how I'm going to actually run this. So the stat line. So I'm going to throw up a sheet right here. Uh, leave this up for a little bit while we talk about this. So I've decided that I'm going to pay the five points and I'm going to run this with seven scorches. So you get two in each turret for a total of four and then you get three more. It's a total of seven. So I got a choice between big shooters, scorches, Gratzukas, rocket launcher, or custom mega blasters. So my configuration, I went with the scorches, and let me tell you why. The Gratzukas, yes, they're strength six. They're 18 inch range, yes, and they fire a lot, a ton of rounds. So they fire two D3 shots each, so that's two D3 times seven. I've rolled this out several times. You're gonna get anywhere between 24 to 28 hits average a high roll you get into the 30s maybe 32 low roll you get down around somewhere 20 21 22 something like that so if we do the math and we math hammer this out the only reason I don't choose to use a Grotzuka because I know a lot of people are like oh dude you got to use the Grotzukas mainly is because there is no minus to the AP. Now let's let's math hammer this out. Let's say you roll high and you get 30 shots with Gradzukas. You still have to roll to hit. You still have to roll to hit. That's huge. So out of 30 shots, your average to hit. Okay, we're well now we're talking hits is 15. Right? That is just straight math numbers. You need a four plus on a D6. So 30 shots, 15 hits out of 30 shots. Then you have to wound. So you're wounding anything that is a Marine equivalent, right? So we're going to say MEQ, a Marine equivalent, toughness four. You're going to wound them on a three plus. So out of those 15 hits, let's say you're going to wound maybe 10 out of 15, somewhere around 10 or 11 out of 15. So you'll drop maybe three wounds, four wounds. Then the Marine at a three plus armor save is going to get a four up save. Or excuse me, he's going to, excuse me, with the Gradzuka, they're going to get a straight three up save. The Scorcha 7D6 averages out to 21 to 24 hits. So now we're talking hits. Remember, the Gradzuka, you only hit round 15. With the Scorcha, you're hitting because it's automatic. So you're hitting 21 to 24. Now we're talking Marine Equivalent, right? Marine Equivalent, Toughness 4, those hits are still wounding on a three plus. No different than the six strength Gradzuka. But you get to apply a minus one AP. So now on a, a Marine equivalent model, instead of them saving on threes, now they're saving on fours. I guarantee it. I guarantee the Scorches are gonna have more Marine equivalent models removed than a Gradzuka. Now you're talking about the range. Okay, I understand. Gradzuka's 18 inch range. Currently, currently a Scorcha is only eight. I have a huge feeling or huge intuition that the ninth codex is going to upgrade the Scorchas the same as that they did all the flamers for all the other factions. They're gonna increase that Scorcha range 
to a 12 inch range. So now you're reaching out and you're touching people with scorches at 12 inches, not that close, tight in eight inches. So if you think I'm full of malarkey and that I'm missing something, go ahead and leave a comment. But for right now, I'm going with scorches. My second setup, okay, let's, let's go a little bit further. My second setup is four scorches in the turrets and three custom mega blasters. That's how I plan on reaching out and touching people is with three custom mega blasters. Sure, I'm paying the extra points, but I get D6 damage and I'm wounding toughness eight on fours. Marine equivalents, I'm wounding on twos. So from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out uh, part three. We went ahead and talked a little bit about the uh, artistic content and what we're going to do. And then we went ahead and today we talked tactics. So we're going to close out part three. Uh, the next time we're going to open this up, we're going to open this baby up to part four. We're going to have a lot more done. We're going to have some rails on this thing, some oil tanks, some fuel tanks, some exhaust. We're going to really kick this thing up a notch and get this uh, model finished. So in part four, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this baby up. So stay tuned. Share, like, and subscribe, fellas. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and hit that subscription button. Hit that notification button so you can go ahead and uh, watch part four coming out and we'll wrap this baby up in part four. I really appreciate you guys watching. Like we always say here on the channel, may all your dice rolls come up sixes unless you're looking for a one. Peace out.